This is True Facts with John Lieberman, CyberStationUSA.com. And in tonight's Searching for Justice segment, can you imagine if one of your loved ones was missing for more than three decades? Your loved one just disappears. They presume she's a victim of homicide, but then nothing for more than 30 years. That's exactly what happened to Kimberly Partridge Carroll's family, and Kimberly is with me tonight. Good evening to you, Kimberly. Good evening, John, and thank you for having me on True Facts today. Tell me a little bit, Kimberly, about your sister, Lori. My sister, Lori, has been missing for 36 years. She was 17 years old when she went missing. She was a senior in high school, and she was walking home from school. She left early that day because she had menstrual cramps, and so she left school after lunch. She had called my mother to let her know that she was leaving school and was on her way home. It was about a a two-and-a-half-mile walk from the school to our home in Spokane, Washington. She walked from, her walk was to be from Ferris High School to Browns Mountain. And there were, there was a sighting of her from the school. There was a neighborhood and one of the neighbors did see her. It was a winter day, so he was out shoveling his walk and she was alone. She was walking. And between our the school and our home, it was rural. There was open fields. And beyond the open field, people were questioned, and nobody had seen her. So it was basically determined that she disappeared between where the neighbor saw her walking and when the houses began again. Now, this was December 4th of 1974, right? That's correct. And how old were you at at that time? I know you're never supposed to ask a woman their age, but how old were you at that time, Kimberly? I was 10 years old, and she was the oldest of six children. I'm fourth in line. I'm now the oldest living sister of hers. I have one older brother and two younger sisters who have been searching for 36 years to find out what happened to our beautiful sister, Lori. Um, she, she was a, a great sister. She loved her younger siblings. She brought us all to the Lord. She played guitar. She taught me how to play the guitar. Um, she was going to graduate the following June and had a wedding plan for that summer. She did have a fiance and she had her life planned out. She wanted to have many children. She was a beautiful, loving young woman and she didn't deserve such a sad ending to her short life. As a 10 year old, can you remember anything about the time period surrounding those days Uh, when Lori went missing? Well, I remember my mom um, was in a panic because it wasn't like Lori to to, um, not be accounted for. She worked at the theater, and because she had menstrual cramps, she wanted to go home and lay down before she had to go to work. And my mom um, knew that something bad had happened right away because it just wasn't like Lori to to not be in contact to just um, go out and she wasn't at one to goof off Um, she wasn't into anything weird she wasn't on any kind of drugs she um, was a very good girl she was on the drill team she worked for the school newspaper as a reporter um, she, I, I remember my mother was frantic 
And I kept thinking she just, she got lost or she's helping somebody and she'll be home soon. And when the police, my mom actually fainted because, and she had never fainted before in her life. And when she came to, this was several hours after Lori should have been home. And when she came to, she said, something's happened to my daughter. Oh, my goodness. I remember just thinking that she was going to be home soon and everything was going to be okay. And as the days passed, and she didn't come home. Obviously, I was I was very worried. Um, the the older all the adults were out searching. Um, she had tickets in her purse when she went missing to the Beach Boys concert that was scheduled for the Spokane Coliseum on December the ninth. And my father had bought them for her. And my parents knew the numbers that were on the tickets. It was general seating. And the police back then didn't didn't nearly do the the things I think that they do now in cases. They wouldn't allow my family to stand at the door and watch for those tickets because it would hold up people coming into the Coliseum. And the police wouldn't do it themselves either. They did go to the concert to look for my sister, who they didn't see there. And it turned out that all the tickets came in. So the tickets that were in her purse that day showed up at that Coliseum. And that was really the only lead the police had to go on at that time. Wow, so somebody who had those tickets either knew exactly what happened to Lori, some, they, they, somehow they encountered her purse in the days after Lori went missing because they used the tickets at the concert. That's right. So it was either the person who took her, somebody who found their purse, her purse, or somebody they gave the tickets to. Now, when the purse was found... What what were the, what were the, were the circumstances around the purse being found? Because I believe wasn't the purse found right near where Lori was last seen? The purse wasn't found. That was misinformation that was um, put put on the internet that um, should not have been. So it was just the contents. It was just it was just those tickets that were found. The tickets were, were taken to the Coliseum for the concert. Right, okay. Her purse was never found. Nothing was ever found of hers. Not one stitch of clothing. Um, no, no trace of her was ever found. What, do you recall what police were telling your family back then? I mean... Give me a sense of over the years, as the as the months turn to years, turn to decades, you know, I mean, somebody doesn't just vanish. Actually, um, they do, and and it's it's very sad. It's very frustrating. It's a life sentence for the family who has to wonder what happened. To their beautiful sister who had her whole life ahead of her, for my parents to worry and cry about their oldest daughter, and to to think, you know, the the things that go through your head, whether she she died that day, and hopefully it was quick, and and. They didn't hurt her that bad, or the the crazy things that go through your head sometimes as to what may have happened, especially when you read news reports about people who've been tortured. So it, it is a life sentence, and we don't know what happened to her. Um, she didn't have enemies. She was a 17-year-old girl with her whole life ahead of her. And we miss her very much, and we want to know 
what happened. We're not holding on to a thought that she's alive and and um it it's there there's no there's no reason to think whatsoever that she ran away. All of her money, all of her um, things were at home. She wasn't having problems at home. She was very loving and very much loved. And there's no reason that, that she wouldn't contact her family if she was able to.